Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Mimosas and Macrame. Today, I'm drinking black coffee with just a little bit of Bushmills. Today, we will be making a plant hanger, and I'll go over all the what you need to make this project. Um, just wanted to say this is the end of May and we're still in sheltering in place. The state of Washington may be opening up soon, although I don't know, everything just seems so uncertain for a lot of us, but I am definitely thankful that I've been able to continue working part-time from home, um, teach my daughter. She's actually able to go to a modified summer camp this summer. So a lot of the anxiety and issues I've been having have somewhat gone down. Um, but I know for a lot of people out there who are unemployed, this virus and now the racial tension and rioting that we've seen this weekend just brings to light how the virus and our entire economy negatively impacts people of color and poor people disproportionately. And it's just so distressing and hard to be here in this country right now and see all of this going on. So I just want this video to be a moment of peace and um, creativity and a moment of um, relaxation that the kind of craft like this can give. Um, all the materials I'll be giving today are readily available. You don't need to spend a lot of money on them. In fact, this here is a bracelet, an old metal bracelet that had some mother of pearl on it that had broken, so I didn't really wear it anymore. So that is what that is. You're going to need about 80 feet of material, which could be um, from a clothesline, um, even yarn. Um, I know I've shown you the product before. This is the just some black unglazed line. It's um, 1 8 inch cotton unglazed and scissors. And that's all you need. And actually three beads, and I'll show you the other part of this. Um, so you'll also notice I have run out of nail polish remover, so I'm sorry if my nails are gross. Um, but this is all about being real. There's no makeup. I am. This is just my stay-at-home hair that's just continued to get larger and larger. Um, but I want today to be all about creativity and peace and finding um, some joy in what you have around you in your home. The rest of the world may be going crazy out there, but for right now, I want us to be here and be present. So the piece that I'm making today is actually inspired because my friend, my dear friend, Wendy, gave me this present. Um, since we've been friends, we've actually visited Mount St. Helens and have had a, a long time interest in the volcanic eruption of Mount St. Helens. So this gift is just incredible. So this is a commemorative box. It says, um, the 1982 Collector Series Evergreen Glass Art Center in Chehalis, Washington. And you open it up. And in here is this really cool little info guide. So this is the glass blower's little art piece. On the back is actual volcanic ash from Mount St. Helens and a map to the art center. And it says, so Mount St. Helens erupted in May 18th, 1980, giving mankind another sample of the power of mother nature. Millions of tons of volcanic ash were thrown into the air, blanketing several states. And for those that grew up here, they remember, uh, the ash contains 64.2% silica, the basic ingredient of glass, plus numerous trace elements like aluminum, uh, alumina, iron, calcium, silver, and gold. This ornament is hand blown from the volcanic ash by Hank Claycamp, a glass blower and inventor from Chehalis, Washington, about 40 miles from the volcano. Hank has developed many formulas to achieve the desired color and uses volcanic ash as a basic forming agent in his glass batch. So I'm going to show you this. So here's this gorgeous glass ball, which I guess obviously was sold as a Christmas ornament. 
But because Christmas comes but once a year and is important in my family, but not like the most important thing, I just thought, oh my God, what if this was inside, like in a macrame net so you could see it at the top. So that's what's gonna go here. There'll be like macrame around it. And then the plant holder will come down like this. It'll be a nice big, because of this so big, a nice big basket to hold a big plant. And then on top of that, hold on, I'm just trying to put this away carefully so it doesn't break. That would just be my luck, right? It would just drop and smash right here. Haha. -ha. Okay. Um, and then part of my homeschool, home, learning at home fun that I'm doing with my daughter is we made these cool Fimo beads. She made some, she made this amazing fake strawberry that looked totally real. And I made these as kind of, so these will go somewhere on here. I don't know. We'll figure out where they're going to go. So I will now change camera angles and get this all set up. You can go get the materials that you need. Go get your mimosa or whatever else it is that you're drinking. Um, and we will meet back here and make this amazing project. So thank you so much. We'll see you soon. All right, everybody, we're back. And as you can see, I put a sheet behind this just so it was easier to see. I'm working um, with a new clip-on light that I bought off of Instagram that has both the light and the clip for the phone, which seems so far to be working really well. Um, and I'm by an open window to get some nice natural light. So, but I just want to make sure you all could see and I'll be moving this closer once we start the project. So you're going to need eight cords um, and each one is about 10 feet long. And the way that I measure that is with my wingspan. I'm about five foot four. So I do one and almost another full wingspan. So maybe this is closer to nine and a half feet, something like that. It doesn't really matter. It's all going to work out in the end just fine. So, so what I do, I take the cord, fold it in half exactly. So you've got your cord like this, fold it in half like a hairpin and you're going to go, here's your ring. I've already done these. So here, let's move this forward. Special effects, moving it forward. Um, so we're going to come from the back through to the front with the bended part, bend it over, um, open this loop and pull, pull your strings through and then just make sure it's nice and tight, tighten it up like that. And then our last one. So you want eight and when obviously you're bending them over, folding them in half and putting them through. So now you'll actually have 16 strings hanging down from your ring. And I was going to say, if you don't have a ring and you don't even have a bracelet in your house, you could do this with a piece of driftwood or a dowel, like a thick piece of a stick. Just pretend this is a stick and it's going out like this and you're just doing this across the, the stick. Um, this is how you would start a macrame wall hanging. And I can show you an example really fast. <clears throat> so this is basically the same technique. Here, let's just scoot this over like that. So here's a dowel and you have your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So basically you can do it on here like this. You can do it like here on this. This All these projects for me start the same. Um, instead of doing this kind of cool diamond pattern, which you, this you can actually see how to do this project in my other video, my first video, um, which I'll link. Um, we're actually going to make a basket at the top to hold that cool glass ball. So, so that's that. 
Macrame for me, once I learned kind of the basics and just had fun just experimenting, um, I learned how to do things, um, just trying things out with different materials. So, so we're going to start off, this is a square knot right here. And sorry for all the noise outside. I like the ambient sound, but maybe I'll just shut our door right here. Okay, Macrame Studio is literally a corner of my living room. So, all right, so I'll show you how to do a square knot right here. So you've got your, let's move these out of the way. So you take four strings you're going to keep the two in the middle as you're, you're working around them. And then you've got your two on the outside. So you're going to make a number four. Like that. This one on the, goes in front of the horizontal bar of the four, around, behind your two upright. And then pull it up like that. And now you're going to reverse it. So now you're making a P, move this out of the way, a P shape. And again, this goes in front of your horizontal bar, around behind the back, and pull it up. So it should look just like this one. do it here. <clears throat> so the same thing, you make a number four, put this in front of the horizontal, go in, up and around behind, and then you make the P, P shape. This goes in front of the horizontal line and around behind the two verticals, like that. And I would say at this point, um, make it, pick a tightness or looseness that you like and just stick with it for this whole row and just do it the same. I feel like people ask me, should I do the tight? Should I do it loose? A lot of students that I've worked with have just their own preference of how they want it to look. Um, so I would just pick, pick one and go with it. Um, I'll tell you, there's some times where you want to make the knots really tight because you're actually holding when you get down to holding the plant things like that you don't want the knots to to pull out or stretch too much so that it looks weird so you want to kind of make those all pretty tight consistently so yeah here's the P go in front of see in front of this horizontal push it around behind the two verticals and tighten it up okay so now you've got your four, your first row, and that looks really nice. It's a great way to start. So now I was trying to think of how to do this. So we're going to make a basket right now to hold the ball. And I don't know if people have ever seen those glass um, fishing. So there's glass balls that have a fishing net around them. They are used as a float. And now, you know, a lot of people use them as kind of a decoration. So we're gonna kind of do, make that. So what I'm gonna do is take the two, so take the two on the, one on each end, take the two right, or two right hand ones from this one, and the two left hand ones from this one. And we are gonna make a net around the ball, and hopefully this will work. I'm making this up as I go, if you can't tell. So we're going to make a square knot like we have, and this is going to be the top. So it can be pretty close. We're going to make it wider so the ball can fit in there. So we're going to go do our square knot. Let's see if this is going to work. Like that. Okay, so now we need to turn it. So now we're going to connect so these two, now we're going to take the left-handed, the left two from the left side and the right two from now the back and just double check that you're grabbing the right 
cords. Get these out of the way. Let's see, can you see that? So do another square knot here, like probably half an inch down from the first row. This is a full square knot. Okay, now we're on the back of this little net ball, ball net, net ball? I don't know what I'm saying, okay. Du, 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 du. I will, I actually haven't done this before. I've just been thinking, you know, how you think about things in your head for a long time before you actually do them. I'm that kind of person where I like think things through and like I need to like process everything for a long time before I take any action sometimes and with this project I was like how am I going to fit this cool glass ball inside where people can see it so okay so now we're on the left side let's see and we're going to do one more square knot at the same level anyway so we'll see if this doesn't work that is fine all right so it's hard to see but let's see if we stretch this out there's basically we've made we had our top row which went straight across now we've got this second row where we've got one knot in the front basically and three across the back which is exactly what I want so now we're gonna come down one more do one more row and here, let me just show you what this looks like with our little our ball. So I'm going to stick it in like this. So it's going to be kind of like that. Ooh, that's going to look neat. And because I want people to be able to see the pattern of this gorgeous glass ball, I don't want to make the knots too close together. So now that I look at it like this, I actually think we just need, so we need a, a layer of knots here and here, and then probably just one more at the bottom. So it's going to look like that, except there'll be a knot here and a knot here and then knots at the bottom. And the ball, I want the ball to be able to spin around because, you know, you might be like, oh, I like how this little swirly looks, or this little swirly. Actually, during the break, I looked up the artist. He's still alive and um, lives in Chehalis. He sold the glass studio to someone else. It sounds like someone else is still carrying on the tradition of using Mount St. Helens ash. Um, on eBay, I found one other... Um, Christmas ornament similar to mine but like totally different so who knows maybe this thing is actually worth something but you know what to me it's gonna be way cooler to have it on display than just in this little box plus this wooden box is so neat and for me I always need somewhere to store what I call little things So here, now we're on this third row, and I'll go back and show you what I did so that it's clear. I know this is probably, I'm probably moving too fast for people that are just learning, and I'm apologizing now for that. So I'm going to say this is about an inch and a half from this one to this one down here. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Like this. Da, da, da. So here's our P. We're going in front of the horizontal bar of the P, pulling it around behind the two verticals, and then, and this really does not have to be tight. I think the tightness will, if you, depending on what you're using, if you have a glass ball or plastic or you're just using something else, um, out again oh yeah that's gonna look really cool 
So yeah, I think we just need one more knot here on the front and that will, these knots, this row down here will hold everything in place because there's no way the ball can fit through this hole. So now I just need to do the back. Um, I am really excited. So, so yeah, in the creative process and you know, I'm all about it right now. I just think all of us are working so hard. Either we have to go to work or we're unemployed or we have to stay home and work or we're taking care of our kids or we're taking care of our parents or we're doing all these different things. Like everyone is really in kind of like survival mode right now. And even though it's possible, you know, things are somewhat going to go back to normal this summer. I just think there's just so much pressure right now on everybody to do everything. And, you know, even simple things, just running to the store to like get stuff becomes this huge kind of stress and you can't take your kids in the store anymore. So then it means you're leaving older kids in the car by themselves or you're leaving kids with their siblings or you're leaving kids at home with a family member or maybe kids are being left at home alone. Anyway, everything, nothing is normal and nothing is easy. And so for me, the creative process, just like getting out some coloring and just doing coloring while I'm on a call at work or painting or something like this just is so healthy and like affirming. Oh my God, I love it. All right. So I'm going to just do this last row and then I'm going to go back and just show you what I did so people can catch up. I think this is cool too. This There's little pieces of abalone in this bracelet, which is broken, but I'll hide it. I think I'll just flip all the broken parts down in here. No one will be able to see. But I just think it's neat that the abalone kind of goes with this. It's like the accidental slash intentional art pro process. Okay, so the trick here is I'm gonna do, let's see, I'm gonna go back to the front. Oops, where's the front? So this is gonna be the front, and the reason I know that is because this one is in the front. So I'm gonna make the front one, and remember, we wanna make it a little bit tighter, so that will actually hold the ball in there. So I'm gonna do this one, like that. So that will kind of like tuck under and then I'm gonna do the one in the back and hopefully that'll be enough to kind of like stick it in there and it'll stay while I do the other two. We'll see. Hold on. And the good thing with macrame is if you didn't do it right, you can just take it apart and do it again. All right, so here's our ball. And just this one is because it was a it is a Christmas ornament. It has this weird little thing at the top. Let's see if that can focus. So be careful. It's glass. It could cut you. Don't go to the emergency room for some dumb thing like a home ac home macrame accident. Okay. So to hold it in there. And you know what? Actually, I want these to be. This one can be further down. Okay. So I want these to be looser. So the good thing is you just undo and undo. Just undo the Knots. Okay. And then. <laughs> Hello. All right. Don't want this to fall. <gasps> Shit. Oh my God. All right, we're back. And yes, you did hear the sound of glass breaking. 
that was stressful. The ball slipped out while I was doing the macrame and it fell out the bottom and rolled over and cracked on, I'm working right by my fireplace for some reason because it's right by the window. So, found all the pieces, the miracle of E6000, I put it all back together and I realized no one's going to be looking at it closely. It's within, I've made this nice net for it. I actually worked horizontally on a table, which in the future, or for those of you who are doing this project, doing this top part on a table flat is probably a lot smarter than what I was trying to do. So don't do as I do. Um, <laughs> that was insane. It was like all the, the thing you don't want to do, and then you just do it because that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to bring this closer so I can show you what I did. Um, and then show you how we're going to do the rest of this, make this, this rest of this into a plant holder. So I'm going to bring this nice and close. The magic of my rolling coat rack, clothing rack. Okay. And you can kind of see there's a crack right there. Anyway, uh, don't worry about it. It's all taken care of. So I actually moved the little, um, hole from when it was a Christmas ornament, the top, I've moved that to the bottom. Um, and so you can see these are all square knots, square knot, square knot, square knot, square knot, all the way around. And then you get down to the bottom and they're just right next to each other. Square knot there, square knot there, square knot there. So this will basically, there's no way this ball can pop out now. Um, Obviously, if you are using a glass ball, like a Christmas ornament on this project, be very careful because obviously even when this is up against a window, when it's hung up or out in the yard or wherever, this obviously could shatter. So and not, Christmas ornaments are not um, safety glass. So I would just be careful. This idea, obviously, to use something like this is quite clever, but not foolproof. So. But that is a really neat idea to go to the thrift store and look for holiday decorations um, and find some maybe that are not exactly Christmassy um, and turn that into some kind of art. So that's what's going on here and I'll probably make a pattern out of this just so people can see. So I've been calling this the front because of the way that I um, first laid this out. There's one square knot here and then the other ones go across the back. So in my mind I've been thinking this is kind of the front. So there's one here, two here, one here, two here, one here across the front. And now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, to actually make the plant holder is we have basically four, oops, so here are the four sides. One, two, three, four. So these four groups of four, because we have 16 ropes, each of these are going to come down um, as the four sides. So I probably will just make big long lines of either square knots or spiral knots coming down and then there'll be a, um, the plant will sit in here. Um, fortunately, I don't have an example right here to show. So these will come down. This is where you'll put the plant in right under here. And then I'll use a series of the, these are basically called alternating square knots. So you do one here and then you spread it, like you split it in half with the one next to it and then bring it back together. And that makes this nice little net basket. So we'll do the same kind of thing after we make these big long lines coming down probably this far. Uh, foot down. That way you could really get a nice big pot in here. Then we'll do alternating square knots again, maybe three or four rows of them, and then the very bottom will be a tail hanging down like this. Um, so yeah, I, let's see, let's, let's start with, let's do a couple, okay, so we can do another square knot here. Oh, actually, I'll show you this cool. This is called a Pico square knot. 
So you make a regular square knot. But don't do it up next to this one. To start it down here, or finish it down here. So you basically have your square knot, bottom of your square knot. Tighten it up. And then you could push the knot up, and it makes this adorable, here I'll push these out of the way. It's adorable little kind of bee shape. Well, wings. Um, We'll do a couple of those. I just think they're kind of cute for out in the garden to have your little bees, busy bees in the garden. Boop. So there's a little bee or a dragonfly or something like that. So that's just a square knot, but you do it about an inch away from the one above it, and then you push it up. So now under that, I think I'm just going to do, how much do we got here? Okay. I'm going to do a spiral knot, which is pretty much the easiest. Let's throw these over. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. There we go. Now everyone can see. Okay. So the spiral knot is basically half of a square knot. that and then you just do the same thing again so you're only doing the four side of the square knot and you can see as you do it it spirals around the central cord the thing to remember with the spiral knot is that you're using up most more of the outside the two outside cords than the inside and so over time you're gonna run out of cord so I have a trick to so let's do ten and then, so basically you just keep doing half of a square knot. The way I count is just count the edge. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So we've done ten. So now, and you'll notice these, these are the two outside cords. Look how much shorter they are than the inside. So my trick is, is actually you finish the square knot. So you do the P side. This goes in front and around the back. Now you take the two outside and you move them to the inside. And you take the outside, obviously, and they become, the inside becomes the outside. So now down here, just do a square knot. Okay. And it makes this neat little shape as well. Whoops. Ooh, and it kind of looks like the bee is going bzzz. So that's neat. Now one thing to notice is you can see down here. We only have about a foot left of material, so this is going to have to be the the rest of the the pot. I think we used a lot more up here than I had imagined in the beginning, so that's fine. It's just good to know because we're gonna we don't want to run out. Um, so this actually won't be as huge a pot as I thought. Um, because we do still need to make our plant pot, like the actual basket. So I think, I think I should do the other three and get to the same point. So this is a good thing if you're inventing your own pattern as you go, which is what I usually do, is do one and just kind of see what you think and then do the other three. So you obviously can stay caught up with your project. Um, because now that I look at this, I think this actually will be great. We'll have the other three coming down like this. 
exactly the same. This will be the opening to put your plant in. And starting here is where we'll make the basket. And we'll do one, two, probably just two layers of knots that make up the, the plant basket. And not only that. So yeah, I think this thing, beautiful, my beautiful glass ball that caused me so much, pro so many problems today is actually just um, took up a lot more th th string than I thought. All right, so I'm going to pause right now and get caught up to this point and then show you where we're at at that point. Okay. All right, so here we are. I'm going to do this last one and just show you what to do. So the pattern is after you um, do this final knot to hold the ball in, you're going to do two more square knots and then two pico square knots, which are these, they look like the little B, ten half, um, ten, not ha ten half square knots to make the spiral knot, and then one, I forget what we call this, like inside out to um, even up the lengths. And then I did the back already to show this is the plant. This is what actually will be the holding the plant like this. And then there'll be a gathering knot or wrap knot here to hold this whole thing together. So this is what it will kind of look like. All right, so let's do two more square knots. Da -da -da -da. Oh, yes. Although it is kind of hard to see what's going on. Let me do it closer. Maybe that's better. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'm still perfecting my quote unquote macrame studio. I feel like this new, this clip light was awesome because it really, you can bring light right where you want it. Um, I think the hard part in this case is just that it's black and it's just kind of hard to see what's going on. So I will take your criticism in stride as I figure out how to do this easier and better. Um, one thing that I have heard that King County King County Library System, which is um, here in King County, outside around Seattle, the county is called King County. Um, have, King County Library System is amazing and actually has two maker spaces, one in Bellevue and one down in Federal Way. And I heard from Seattle Recreative that the maker spaces were looking to start making online content since they can't actually host classes in person. Um, so I am intrigued to know whether they have a setup there where I could come in and teach this with like really good lighting and who knows, kind of up my game a little bit. Um, because, you know, last year we were talking about hosting more, let's see, one, two, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, yeah, Federal Way is kind of a drive from Seattle. Um, but the librarian and the crafts person down there was really cool, so. I don't know, I'm kind of hopeful that something happens with that. Um, the Seattle Recreative, where I also teach, we taught a class by Zoom to do macrame, which worked out pretty well. There were three other women in the class, three women in the class, which is a good number. Um, the hard part was because people were doing it at home and by Zoom, it was really hard for me. I, you know, people didn't really have a super good setup as far as where they were doing the crafts. And so 
when they had trouble, it was actually hard to see what was going on with what they were doing. So I don't know. I think that's the limitation with online classes is unless you can actually see your students and help them, I, you know, it, you can only do so much from far away. So, cause normally in a macrame class, you know, everybody's working and I can just walk around and like see what everyone's doing. It's very social obviously, but with social distancing, I just, you know, don't think it's wise. All right. So here, Ooh, look at that. It's going to look so cool. Um, yeah, you'll notice <laughs> the string, the cords are all different lengths. So obviously when I was measuring out my eight, I did not measure exactly. And then the other thing that happens is just as projects are being done, as you do them, you're pulling some tighter or not tighter. And so the links, it never works out to be perfect. I don't know. I'm sure there's some way to like be more specific about calculating the links. Or if you knew you were going to do square or spiral knots, you could like add extra links to the sides that are going to be. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. I'm not there yet. I'm just like, cut eight the same length and just deal with it. All right. I do really like this light and cell phone. I forget the brand. I'll put a link. It was one of those. I'm just such a sucker on Instagram. It's like they're just marketing products to me because of my age and what I do and I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, you think I want all this stuff? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so while I've been home, I've been ordering quite a few things off Instagram, which I never did before. Just shows COVID is like, makes everyone different. <laughs> okay, so here we are, look at that. So now we're just gonna do a gathering knot here and we're gonna be done. This looks so great. Um, Okay, for the gathering knot, let's just move this whole deal up. Can you see this? Okay. Okay, so for the gathering knot, you need about, oop, bling, doinks, okay. Okay, you're gonna need probably 18 inches of material because you need to, it's gonna go down here and it's basically gonna be about as wide as my fist and it's gonna gather all of these strings together like this and the tension of the gathering knot is basically gonna hold your project together like that. Um, it's what's going to hold your plant pot in place. So you want to do this nice and tight. It's totally fine that you've got all these different links and some people, you know, cut everything off at the same length to make it even. Some people make it all different. Um, I just realized we didn't use the beads. So I might actually just put the beads on these tails that are hanging down. So there's just something interesting hanging there. Okay, so the way the gathering knot works is you take your, so you've got your, it's probably, yeah, 18 inches, and bend it over, make a hairpin, oops, okay, so this is probably six inches long, so you're going to gather your, all your knot, or all your cords, and I just kind of like smooth everything out. And if you do have any little weird short ones, get tuck them onto the inside. So then what I do is I lay everything across in my hand like this. I lay the string or the, the bent with the tail hanging. Actually, let's do it with the tail hanging up. That way you can really see what's going on. So now, so you've got your little tail, you've got your long piece. And now you're going to just start wrapping it 
hence the name, the wrapping wrap knot. And you're going to go each wrap follows and keep your loop where you can see it. Um, tighten it as you go. And then you're going to pull your the tail through the loop. It's going. I might have to do this again. And you pull it right up inside. And there you have it. Okay, I'm going to do that again. That came out kind of weird. Okay, and if you don't like it, just pull it off. Okay, whoops. Okay, so bend it like that. We're going to put the loop going down. Grab all this. Make it nice and flat. Lay it in there like this. And then just start wrapping. And you're going to wrap it. Keep each of the coils parallel to each other as you go down. And again, if you see, if you happen to have a super short little cord hanging out, just tuck it in so no one can see it. It's not going to affect your project at all. Okay, so here's the end, the tail that you've been wrapping with. Here's your loop. You're going to pull it through the loop and hold it with your hand here. Here's your, the top. Pull it up. There. And then you can just take scissors and trim off this little nub and trim this off. And take your scissors and jam that in there. No one will see it. Like this. No one will see it. And then, like we talked about, some people want some big longies, some people want it all to be the same. Usually I kind of split the difference. Let's back this up so you can see the whole project. All right, so there's our whole project. <laughs> the ball, there's our basket. Got this glass just to show how this will look. Ooh, that is cool. You could actually put something bigger. The way that I made this is actually you could put something much wider in there. Um, this is just to show how it's going to hang. And this is nice to actually see there is a lot of material that hangs down. So we've got our beads. Now I'm just, I need to decide, do these go? The green doesn't exactly match. And now I'm kind of not sure how we're going to put these on here. I should have put one up here, but you know what? I think I'm going to save these for a different project. Now that I look at them, they really, it's not close enough and I don't want it to clash. And I really want people to be able to see that. After what I went through today to fix that thing, all the stress, I just, anyway. All right, so I think we're done. I think I'm going to cut it off right here and then hang it up and I'll take a picture, a couple, or take some pictures of it. And it's, so the thing with this cord is it's not like typical macrame material that frays. So you're not going to get the kind of feathery look. It's more rope-like, I guess. Um, if you had kind of the, here, but that looks great. Trim these. I kind of like it how it's got a little, um, 
layered effect. <laughs> Let's pull this up over here. Da, 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 da. All right, I'm gonna pause this and hang it up outside where you can see, and then we'll be done with our project. All right, here is our finished product. So excited that this worked out. We've got our Mount St. Helens Chehalis glass ball from 1982 that has had a hard day but is now in a very safe spot. We've got our two Pico knots and spiral knots going down to a plant basket. Just stuck this little spider plant in here to show what it'll look like. And then a nice little tail at the bottom. So, whoops. Thank you so much for joining me today on this project, on this journey to make this cool project. <laughs> Happy crafting. I hope you are safe and healthy and peace and creativity. And thank you from Mimosas and Macrame. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.